Right before we jump into this Nikon D5500 user's guide, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it's going to give you the latest information as I release it. And don't forget that I have over 1,800 free videos for you guys to check out and enjoy and learn from. So now go ahead and enjoy this Nikon D5500 video showing you how to set it up. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a Nikon D55 how to user's guide. So what I'm going to do is run you through all of the buttons on the outside, how to set up your lens, how to set up your camera, and then get into the menu system. You're gonna follow me through as I set up the menu, how I would personally set it up, and I'm gonna give you the reasons why I do certain things and why I don't do certain other things. But by the end of this video, you're gonna have an understanding of how to set up your Nikon D5500 to go out there and start shooting. I always still recommend using the user's guide. Go ahead and read the manual that came with your camera so you can get familiar with what the buttons mean, where they are, but I'm gonna do my best job to explain them to you as we go through it. So the first things that I'm gonna do right here is the basic stuff. Now, I start with the basics, and I'm sure you're gonna find some very useful information. If you think this is too basic, wait till we get into the menu systems and other recommendations that I have, because I think they're going to help you out. First things first, the battery. You can't start shooting without a battery. So this is where the battery goes, down here in the bottom right here. Now with a battery like this, you're probably going to get about 800 shots. Now if you start adding video into the fold, you're going to get less and depending on how much you use live view will depend on how much battery life you actually get because that all affects what you're shooting. So that just pops in right here. There is only one way to put it in there. Clicks in, shuts the door, and you are good to go. That means the battery is in. But let me talk about the lens. We've got the lens right here. Now when you get it, it's either body only or as a kit. You have a lens. You have to figure out how do we put the lens on here. I know it may sound simple, but I know I struggled with this when I first started shooting because I didn't know how to put lenses on. I know it's simple, you line up some dots, but you'll get used to it, it's pretty easy. Here we have a white dot on the lens. They've made it much easier these days. And then here you have a white dot on the camera, on the body. You line them up and then you click it in and you hear it click. Now, good recommendation is to keep the camera off when you're doing this and don't change lenses if it's in a dusty environment or it's raining or you could get some schmutz inside the camera. That's something that you don't want to have happen. But once the lens is on, unless you're switching lenses to other lenses, then you don't have to worry about taking it off very often. So here we have the on-off switch. I know it's simple, but it's there. You go on-off. That's how you turn it on, that powers the camera, that gets you ready to shoot. Now in the first part, I'm just showing you where everything goes. This is where the memory card goes. It's a door, you open it. The memory card goes right here, you take it out, or in this case, you put it in. There's only one way to put it in, and I believe there is a picture somewhere around here that I can't see, but you put it in, click it in, the light on the back turns green, shut the door, and you're ready to go right there. So we've talked about how to turn it on, put the battery in, put the memory card in. Uh, what else can I show you? I can show you the buttons. This is the shutter button. This is where you take pictures. You press it, you're going to get a picture. You hold it halfway down to get your focusing if you are shooting in autofocus. If you're shooting in manual focus, you're going to end up turning the lens manually. Right up here is your top dial. Generally when you start and you get the camera, it's gonna be on auto mode. I personally never shoot in auto mode. A lot of people like to start in auto because they're not sure what they're doing, which is perfectly fine until you start to understand how to use the camera. But then where I live, I personally live in manual. Now when I shoot manual, or basically I live in manual because it's just easier to take control of the camera and I guarantee you that I can teach you in three shots how to get the proper exposure. I know that may sound uh, a little crazy right now, but I did create a video guide that can help you out called the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. It teaches you how to get into manual. You can click up on the screen now to see a preview of that, but we can talk more about that later. So you have manual. Aperture, so manual means that you have to control and change your shutter speed and your aperture on your own. Aperture priority means you set the aperture and the camera is going to automatically set the shutter speed depending on what your ISO is and what, your set, uh, what scene you're in. 
Uh, shutter priority, which is the S on the wheel, means that you set your shutter speed and the camera is going to set everything else for you. Set your aperture just so that it, it stays matching that shutter speed that you wanted. For example, if you wanted it 1 1 25th of a second, it's going to stay there and the camera is going to compensate everything else to make sure that that is the right shutter speed. It's not always the best. It's not always perfect. That's why I like to shoot in manual. Now P stands for program. It doesn't stand for professional. You're not a professional photographer because you put it in the P mode. P mode is basically full auto, like this green spot right here, except you can make other changes to different settings that in, in auto mode you're not able to do. I don't use scene mode. Scene mode is one of those things where you can set the, like uh, I'm shooting sports or I'm shooting portraits or I'm shooting landscapes. It's gonna show you different options it's really all the same, you know, it's better to get an understanding of how the camera works and not really use these setting modes. Uh, flash, this is one that a lot of people have, have trouble with. It's the flash with the do not around it. You know, this thing with, a, with the lightning bolt and it's crossed out. That means if you're in a situation and you can't use the flash or you're not supposed to use a flash like a museum or a concert or something along those lines, you put it into this mode. Now when you put it into this mode, it's still in auto, but the flash will not pop up. Where if I'm in auto, and let me just make it darker, the flash is gonna pop up because it says I need the flash. Well in this case, I don't want the flash to pop up, so I put it into this mode and boom, pressing the shutter button halfway and the flash isn't popping up anymore. That's something that if you want to stay in auto is going to come in handy when you're shooting. So going around the top here, this is the live view switch. This is how you turn on. Let me open up the back screen because it won't do that unless that is on. Turn this to manual. That will flip up the mirror inside and then give you a live view as you can see right here on the screen. You can see that it's the live view. And I'm gonna turn that off by pulling it back. Now you're gonna use live view generally when you're shooting video. I'm not a big fan of live view for shooting photos because it's not stable. And speaking of stable, I'll quickly show you the proper way to hold the camera. Tuck the elbows in, bring the camera up to your eyes. This is so much more stable than if you're sitting there on live view and trying to hold the camera like this. That just doesn't work. Tuck the elbows in, boom, boom, stable. It's gonna help you get better pictures. So that's the live view button. Right here is your command dial. This is going to allow you to change your shutter speed. So for example, I hit the info button so I can see the back of the screen. Watch the shutter change. That's this one right here. We see how it's going to one one thousandth of a second, one eight hundredth of a second. That's how you're commanding that. But if I want to change the f-stop, there's a button right here with the plus minus on it. You hold down the plus minus and then you change the f-stop that way. That's when you're in full manual. A lot of people aren't sure how do I change the aperture because I can only change the shutter speed. That's when you hold down the plus minus if you are in full manual. Now if you're in aperture priority, you just turn the dial here on the back because that's the only thing you're in control of. But that's just something that a lot of people don't know because not a lot of people really explain that. You hold down this button and you turn the back dial and you can see it change. Now figuring now that the screen is up, I might as well talk about it because this is a 3.2 inch touch screen so intuitive, really awesome to use. So you hit the info button just like this. It's a touch screen, so it just works. So if I want to change, say, raw, I can change raw. Right now it's on raw plus fine. I just want it to be on raw, I'll touch raw. And this is great, I want to change the ISO, boom. I can change the ISO. I want to change the white balance. You get the point. It's a touch screen. It's intuitive. It is amazing how well this works. One of the best functions I've ever seen in a camera. Now, if you want to see this camera in action, you want to see a five minute portrait with it and you want to see some other videos that I've done with the Nikon D5500, just hover over the screen and look for that I button in the top corner. Click on it and then you can see different playlists and different options that I've set up for you guys so you can see this D5500 in action. So back to the screen here. You can see that I'm touching the screen and nothing's happening. It's not gonna change in this section, meaning I put my nose up to it, it's not gonna change a setting if I accidentally hit it. That is something great to know. So also, with the info on, watch what happens when I do this. That's a proximity sensor. That means when you hold the camera up to your face, it's gonna turn the info screen off. I love that function. And actually, when I pull my face down from it again, or pull the camera down from my face, the info screen doesn't come on. Now you can change that in the menu system, which we'll show you later, for how you can 
turn that, leave it on, so when you move your, the camera down, it will go and show up. So what other buttons do we have? Well, obviously, this isn't a button, but this is your viewfinder. This is what you're looking through. I know it's simple, but it's there. That's how you can change your, uh, all your different focus points. That's what you're seeing when you take a picture. Now, when you do take a picture, I want you to know that the mirror is going to flip up and block your, your field of view. So depending on how slow your shutter speed is, you're gonna lose sight of whatever is through the lens because this is an SLR, which is a single lens reflex, which means that when a picture gets taken, boom, this flips up. And that brings up another thing. If you see dust and dirt, when you're looking through the viewfinder, that's never gonna show up on your image. Why? Because look, this mirror has to flip out of the way in order to expose the image sensor that's behind it. So anything that's on this mirror will not show up in your final image. So line up the white dot again, the white dot again, and that's how we're going to put the lens back on. So I showed you that. So let's just flip it. Uh, well, we talked about the proximity sensor. We have the hot shoe. This is where you put an external flash or where I would put maybe an external microphone or even a light if you're shooting video. You can put it right here or sometimes even a GoPro for another camera uh, angle when I'm doing video. Right here is a button to press to pop up your flash. This is your flash. It's good for roughly 10 feet depending on what you're shooting. You can pop that down. These are your stereo microphones for when you're shooting video. Now, a lot of times, depending on what lenses you're using or, or uh, yeah, what lenses you're using, you're gonna hear the focusing of the lenses getting picked up right here. That's why a lot of people like to use external microphones because it, it takes the microphone off the camera. Uh, like I'm wearing a lavalier underneath my shirt right now. That's a wireless microphone so that it's gonna record much better uh, than the in-camera audio. So we've got that up here. We have, um, uh, let's see, a function button. We've got the lens to, re to remove the lens button over here. We have another function right here that you hit that. It, it brings up something on the screen. I'll explain more of that when we, actually I'll do it right now. So you see multiple photos right here, a timer and a remote. I'm going to hit, it sounds like a joke. So multiple frames, a timer and a remote walk into a bar. Anyway, you press a button and what happens is it turns on this back here. So then this is if I want to change from continuous high. Let me go back into that. There we go. Oh, okay. I see what's happening here. I had, to, I had to think about what was going on. If I wanted to be in continuous low, I would hit the L, high, or Q, which is the quiet mode. So this is where you have different functionalities to, to change. And everything is explained if you hit the question mark. It's like having a user's guide built right in. Utilize that question mark. It's a great thing to have. The playback button. You hit that, and you're going to play back your pictures. You swipe on the screen to move, and you can even double pin, or sorry, pinch like this to zoom in just like you can do on your phone. You can also go the other way, and it's going to give you a, a, a grid view of all your images. You can simply touch one, and it opens it up, and you can do it. You, now, you can't double tap it to like it on Instagram, but that's because it's not connected to Instagram. You have the info button, which we talked about before. That turns on the info screen and allows you to make all the changes that you want to make. So we hit back, and we hit back again, and that locks it. You've got your uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start button. This is how you get around your menu system. One way to get around your menu system is you simply move this. It's also a way that you can transition from image to image. It's much easier than sitting here and swiping every single time and letting that transition happen. The OK button is how you accept things, or you simply touch it because you have the touch screen. Then, say, let me get to a good picture here. If you want to zoom in, and you don't want to do the pinch, you can just hit the zoom in, or you could zoom out, and then this is the trash can. Make sure if you're gonna delete something that you either hit cancel, because no, I don't want to delete it, or yes, but a good recommendation is don't worry about deleting photos in the camera. That's a good way that you may accidentally delete something you didn't want to delete. Cards are inexpensive. Get a nice size card, leave it in the camera for when you're shooting. Don't delete unless you really need to clear up some space. This sensor right here is, a, is for a remote. It's infrared. You've got your menu button. That just gets you into your menu system, which we're going to run through next. Um, you have there. Then on this side of the camera, You've got a remote plug, you have a microphone plug, and you've got your auxiliary cable for your audio video out. This just flips open, everything goes in there, there, and there. 
Let's see, what else do we have? The bottom of the camera, this is your hot shoe. Sorry, not your hot shoe. This is your tripod mount. This is where you would mount to a tripod or a monopod um, or any kind of stabilizer that you're using. That goes right in there. And I probably should show you that this screen rotates and, and goes away. So if you put it in your bag, it's going to protect your screen when you close it up like this. To open it, you do this. You rotate it around and go like this. Now, it doesn't rotate all the way around. You don't ever want to force it because that could break it. So I, I leave it open when I'm shooting and I close it when I am not shooting. Last things I'll show you here on the, on the lens. If your lens A means for autofocus, manual means you're now going to manually focus with the, with the ring. I leave it on autofocus. And then you have VR. It's either going to be on or off. For those who don't know what VR is, it's image stabilization or vibration reduction as Nikon calls it. That helps you stabilize the image from shake that you may have, or if you're on a boat or something, it's gonna help you counterbalance that. Now what a lot of, and it lets you shoot at slower shutter speeds, but what a lot of people get mis, uh, really the misconception is that if you're shooting say action and somebody's running across the field of view and you have the VR on and it's a slow shutter speed, you're not gonna freeze them because you have IS. They're going to blur, but the background's going to be nice and stable. VR is very good for when you're shooting video. You put that on, especially if you're hand holding, it's going to stabilize. A good recommendation is if you're on a tripod, you turn VR off because it's already stable. Uh, I use it a lot of times when I'm shooting photos, especially in low light situations, because it allows me to hand hold and get less blur when I'm shooting. But there's a whole different tutorial on how to use IS and VR uh, that I've will create or have already created. So I think that runs us through the outside of this camera. The only thing I didn't show you was the HDMI port, but that's where the HDMI goes. That's so that you can plug into a TV and play everything back if you want. I believe it plugs into a TV. Uh, that does work right there. And other than that, that is a basic rundown of the outside of the camera, how to get it started. Now I want to move into the menu system for the, how I set this camera and how I think you guys may like to set it as well. So before we jump into the menu system, I forgot to show you one thing on the back of the camera that may come in handy for those people that wear glasses or contacts. That is the diopter. That's this dial right here. Now just look through the camera, make sure it's focused on something, turn this until it looks clear for you. So that's your diopter. So now I'm gonna get into the menu system and I wanna remind you guys that we're plugged into an Atomos. Now the reason we're plugged in is so that you can see the menu on the screen really clear uh, and what that does is that also means that I can't use the touch screen functionality of the camera right here, but I want you to know that you can still touch anything on the back of the screen in the menu to select what you wanna select. So now let's do an overview of what each thing means. So what we have here is the playback menu. Uh, delete all, not exactly what you wanna do. You don't wanna go in here and say, Yes, all, select date, selected. I'm not a big fan of deleting things from the camera, like I said earlier. Uh, playback folder, I leave this stuff uh, I leave this stuff alone, but playback options. We've got no image, just none, image only. Highlights, RGB histogram, shooting data, and overview. So if I want to put the overview on, I go ahead and I move, I uh, hit the right arrow, or you just touch it, and it's going to go ahead and give you the check mark. Now what this means is when I get into this, uh, this menu system and I hit the, let's see, it's up. You see that? That's with nothing on. Oh, actually, that's for the highlights. That blinky thing that you see in the background, that means that's blown out. There's no detail there. No detail there. That doesn't mean that it's not a good image. It just means there's no detail in the background. And you can see the different info that it shows up on the screen. I like seeing this info screen because it tells me what the photo was taken at. That's something important to have. Uh, I like to turn those on. So we've got image review off. That means when you take a picture, the image isn't gonna pop up on the screen automatically. I don't like that. I don't like the image to pop up on the screen, one, because when I'm shooting in a dark area and the screen turns on, it makes it harder for me to see through the viewfinder because I have all this bright light in my face. Image rotation is on. Now, let me remind you that there's that question mark in the bottom corner. When you hit the question mark, or you hit, in this case, the minus button, you can read what it says. It says recorded camera orientation when taking photos, image taken when off is selected, will not be rotated for display during playback. I like to have image rotation on. Rotate tall, I have off. That's because I like to turn the camera vertical for vertical shots so I can see it full screen. 
Slideshow, don't worry about that. Uh, printing, don't worry about rating, select smart device, nothing I worry about there either. Now the shooting menu is important. Um, shooting storage folder, you leave it at 100. File naming, I rename it to Fro. You can name it, like if it was my initials, it would be JSP. You just rename it so it's not just, uh, just a general uh, file name. You rename it with whatever you want it to do. Now image quality, this is something that I am big into. I leave it I shoot RAW, so I leave it in RAW. Now, if you're just starting out and you're not sure about editing RAW files, it's okay to shoot in JPEG, but my recommendation is that you shoot in RAW plus JPEG so that when you do go ahead and edit the RAW or want to edit the RAW files in the future, you have them. So a lot of people think that RAW files take up a lot of space, which they do, they take up more space, but memory cards are inexpensive. I highly suggest you shoot RAW, even if you don't know why now, you will understand in the future. One of the things, one of the ways that I can equate it is that if you bake a cake, you have the RAW ingredients, the eggs, the butter, the flour, whatever. You bake the cake and you burn it, meaning you mess it up. Can you go back to the raw ingredients and start over? Not when you shoot JPEG, but with the raw files, you can always go back to the very beginning, mix it up, cook it for longer, cook it for shorter, and always have control of that original file. So I shoot in raw. All right, image size. Now, if we were just shooting in JPEG, we would then go ahead and have the option to set image size. I'm a big fan of shooting in the largest possible. Why shoot in anything less than the highest quality? You can always go down in quality if you have the highest quality file, but you can't shoot JPEG basic and then get back into a higher quality. Once you've done it in the dumb quality, you can't grow it back. 14-bit recording is the highest quality. That's the most bits of color. That's something that I leave there. ISO sensitivity, you change this yourself uh, when you're shooting each picture, depending on the situation that you're shooting in. I don't use auto ISO. I turn that off, personally. White balance, I leave that on auto because when you shoot raw, you can change the white balance later. Picture styles, or they call them picture controls here, set picture control. Neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, flat. These only affect your JPEGs and the previews on the back of the screen. So that means if you're only shooting JPEG, you are baking the file in. So if you shoot it in monochrome, that means you're gonna shoot a picture with no color. It means it's never gonna have color if it's JPEG. But if you're shooting RAW and you shoot monochrome, even though it's showing you monochrome on the back of the camera, the RAW file still has the color in it. But I don't recommend shooting in monochrome. I recommend editing that later. Um, generally, standard is fine, but you wanna get in here and tweak different settings. Now, one of the words of warning that I wanna give you when you shoot JPEG is if you bump the clarity too high or the sharpening too high, you can't go back and change that after you shoot the picture. The RAW file lets you go ahead and do that. So that's why I shoot RAW, because you have full control of everything after the fact. Even if you mess up, it's going to be a better way to save your files. Uh, so where was I here? Active delighting off. Release mode, I have uh, that on high right now. You've got high, you've got continuous low. That means how many frames per second you're gonna shoot. And then single frame, meaning when you shoot a picture and hold the button down, it's only gonna shoot one at a time. In continuous low, it's gonna shoot, I think maybe two or three frames a second. And then in continuous high, I think this camera was six frames a second. I honestly don't recall how many frames a second it does, but as long as you hold your finger down, it's gonna rapid fire shoot. Now when you're shooting raw 14 bit, it's going to fill the buffer quicker, so you may not get as many shots in a row as you would with JPEG, so that's something to remember. Quiet release is something that you put on if you're in a quiet area, it's gonna shoot a quieter shot instead of a, a louder, it's not much of a difference between the quiet and the regular there. Self timer, you can set that between two seconds. Uh, what is it? I can hit this. Let me see, oh, there it is, two seconds is underneath. Oh, there it is, yep, yep. And there we go, so that's that menu. Long exposure, noise reduction, I leave off. High ISO, noise reduction, I leave off because I'm shooting RAW. If you're shooting JPEG, you may want to turn that on, but know that the, that the in-camera noise reduction is gonna make your images look less sharper, and that's why I don't turn that on. I, I don't like the way that it makes the images look. Um, vignette, normal, auto distortion control, off. Movie settings is something that we'll get, we can get into now. Um, 
It's just where you would set your movie settings. Uh, again, I shoot that on high. Microphone, you have, you have your microphone off. You can have your microphone on manual sensitivity, which is where I like to have it. You can have it on auto sensitivity. Just know that auto sensitivity may not be the best option for recording audio. We talk about that in some other videos, um, how to properly set your microphone and why we shoot it in manual. Wind noise reduction, I leave that off. Um, manual movie settings I leave on so that you can control your own movie settings. Now this is the most important menu system. Now this does take a while so bear with me. These are important to understand what each one of them do. Now remember you still have the question mark. You also have the manual at home that you can read but this is a, a, an overview of how I set it. AFC priority selection. What does this mean? It means Choose the operation performed when the shutter release button is pressed. Release. The shutter can be released even when the camera is not in focus. Focus. Uh, the shutter can only be released when the camera is in focus. I have it set to release. I have it set to release because sometimes I know it's in focus and the camera doesn't think it is and it's not shooting and I miss something. So I leave that on that. Number of focusing points. 39, I like to be able to choose between the 39 points. You have a lot of them, so we use it. Built-in AF, AFS illuminator, I actually didn't show that earlier, but that is back here. That's this light right here. That helps you focus in low light by putting out a beam of light onto your subject. Now that can get distracting. If you're shooting concerts or something, or you're shooting something that where somebody is doing anything, and that if you distract them, they may mess up what they're doing, I leave that off personally. Uh, range finder, leave that off. I, uh, EV steps for exposure. I do one third of a stop instead of half a stop or one stop. ISO display, that means it's displaying inside the camera. Shutter release button, AE lock. Uh, I don't even know what that is, so I skip past it. Auto off timers. I have that on normal. That's for how long the, the timers and uh, how long the, the menus inside, or basically how long the menus will stay on. Remote duration, one minute. Let's see, exposure delay, I have that off. File number sequence, I have on. That means if you take one picture or 10 pictures, the next time you take another picture, it's gonna be 11. Uh, they have another option where it will reset each time. I don't want it to reset each time. I want it to count up to 9,999. Is it, yeah, it's, it's 9,999 and then it starts back at one again, but then it moves to folder 101 instead of 100 like we had before. Grid display off, date stamp. Never put the date stamp on your pictures. Don't ever do, that's bad. Don't do date stamp. Reverse indicators, I leave that exactly the way it is. Uh, let's see, mm, don't really need to worry about this stuff. Look, play with the menu system. I don't need to give you every in and out of this stuff. Go in and read what each thing does. I'm just going over the things that I personally use that I think are important. All right, and that takes us back to that. Now we're into the wrench mode. Format memory card. This is where you go when you put a fresh memory card into the camera. I'm not gonna format it right now because I have pictures on it that I wanna show you guys, but this is where you delete everything. You put the card in the camera. Every time I put a card in the camera, first thing I do is I review the images and make sure that I've backed them up first. If I've backed them up and they're saved somewhere else, when I start a new shoot, I go and I reformat the card. That starts it blank. It gets rid of everything on the card, so you're starting fresh. I reformat the card every single time. You're not gonna mess up the card by reformatting it a thousand times. It's not gonna degrade the quality of your images, but it just allows you to start with a fresh, clean, card but the word of warning is make sure that you've backed up the files that are already on the card so that you're not erasing them and losing them forever copyright information I have on I put my artist name in there I put the copyright in there so that's saved in the metadata it does the metadata is the information that says how your camera was shot that's stored with the image not on the image like a date stamp would be um, time zone, set the time for your location just so that it's in there so that you know when the pictures were taken. That comes in handy. Language means you can change it to spend, depending on what language you speak or want to read. Beep, is, beeps, beep options. Now, I have the beep on. That is for when I'm taking pictures and I hold the button uh, halfway down in single focus mode. You hear that? That's high, that's low. Some people may find that to be annoying, but I find it very helpful, especially because this viewfinder is so small, it's hard to see the focus sometimes. I love hearing the beep to know that I am locked in focus. Now that's when you're in single focus, not continuous. In continuous, you won't hear a beep because the focus is gonna be continuously focusing. Touch controls are on. That's so that you can touch this, the, the screen and make uh, changes from touching it. I love the touch screen. 
Let's see, monitor brightness, I leave it set to zero. I don't, is there an auto option? No, which is good. Uh, I want it to be as close to normal as possible. Even outside, I don't change the brightness because if you're looking at the screen to see if your image was good or not and exposed properly, this isn't a good representation. That's why people look at a histogram. I'm not gonna explain that right now, but a hi okay, I'll explain it quickly. The histogram is a visual representation of your exposure uh, so that if you're in a bright area, you can look at the histogram and say, okay, the exposure is right where, or, or close to being right, whereas if you looked at a bright screen, it may not be uh, a proper representation. Info display, I like that, I leave that on. Auto info display, I have off. That's that, I don't want that on all the time. Info display, auto off, I have that on. So that turns off. Clean image sensor, if you get dust on your sensor, not the mirror, but if you get dust on your sensor, you go ahead and do that. Lock mirror up for cleaning, have a professional do that, or read up heavily on how to properly clean your sensor so you don't mess that up. Image dust off, uh, reference photo, I honestly don't use that. Um, flicker reduction is on auto. Slot empty, if you do not have a memory card in the camera, put this on lock. You don't wanna shoot pictures with no camera, with no card in the camera, because then you're gonna miss everything. NTSC or PAL, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, terminal, Wi-Fi, you can turn Wi-Fi on or off. Right now it's gonna not let me use that option. And then the firmware where you'll see what your, see what your firmware, where you will see what firmware you are on. They may update the firmware twice or three times in its life. They may start doing that more often, but you can update that, find all the instructions online on their website. Uh, retouch menu, I stay out of here. I don't do any retouching of the images in the camera. Uh, and then we've got recent settings. So any settings that I've uh, used, you can access them quicker right here. I wish they had a menu setting where you could set my menu. They do that in some of the other cameras, but they don't do that in here. So let's go into the playback again. We showed this. You can go through everything by cycling through by either touching the screen and moving it or tapping right or left, and then the up or the down changes the menu system. Here you can see all of the artist information where we added it from the touch, uh, from the copyright menu, and that's basically running through the menu system. So that's how I would set it up. Um, it's a basic overview, but like I said, read your manual, go through and hit the info button here, not the info button, the question mark button, so that you can see and read basically the manual in the camera so you know what each thing means. It's really good to go out there and play with everything. This is just an overview for how I would do it and how I set my camera. Now it's up to you to tweak the settings to find out what works best for you. And that's it for this section. And we're gonna come back with another thing right now. Okay, so I wanna show you guys what Live View is gonna look like. I've already gone ahead and pulled the Live View button back so that it activates it, flips the mirror up, and now allows me to see uh, exactly what the camera is seeing. Now for this video, you can see that I'm looking here, my live view is back here on this Atomos. That's because we want you guys to see exactly what the camera is seeing. Now, when I hit the info button, it pops up the info screen. Here's where it's touch screen comes in handy. I can't do that right now because I'm showing it to you right here, but you can touch everything on your screen to make all the changes. So let's see, let's go back to the main screen. Uh, if you were to hit the info button on the back of your camera, you can see that it's gonna rotate through a couple of different options. Now this one that we're on right now, you can see that you have the gray buttons, sorry, the gray line at the bottom. That's giving you your 16 by nine aspect ratio. That's what it's gonna record, meaning anything inside that black area underneath is not gonna record in your video. You can see that you have your uh, left and right audio that's moving, the levels are moving there. We've got that we're in auto white balance and standard uh, picture control. We have AFS, it's gonna find the face. Steven, can you slide off to the side a little bit? Let's see if it finds his face, hold on. Let me get the focus going. It doesn't want to find his face right now. Okay, well, uh, maybe that's because I'm in this mode. We'll try something different. We can see that you're in manual. You can see that you have 20 minutes. With the Nikons in the highest quality video that you're shooting, you're going to get 20 minutes of continuous cord recording before it stops. Then you can stop it and start it up again, and it's going to continue to record. This button right here that you see, uh, sorry, on the screen, you see the box moving. If that ends up getting into, say, a distant corner, you just hit the center button on the back of the camera and boom, it pops back to the middle. So here we go. Let's hit the info button to see what else we have inside here. We've got the movie frame size and quality. This is where you can set it to, 
uh, 1080 at 60 frames a second. That's a great function that even some of the pro cameras don't even have yet. You've got, uh, and that's 1080 in with the, with the star next to it. I always shoot with the star. That's the highest quality possible. And I'm on 1080 at 24 frames a second. You can see that you can do 720. You can do, I would never get into the 424. I would never shoot down there. Uh, I'm generally in 1020 at 24 frames a second or 60 frames a second is where I shoot. So you just touch the screen to select what you want to select. Now this is, you should see the microphone levels. Let me put them up higher. So this is peaking. That's when it's in the red area. That's not where you want your audio to be. Generally speaking, you see this negative 12 up on the screen right here. That is uh, generally where you want it. So let's see. Let's set it to roughly 8, and it's pretty darn close, and it's not peaking. Good. It's not getting into the red area. That's just a quick overview how you would do that. Touch the screen. Boom. You're good to go there. Uh, white balance, I leave that on. Well, you could leave it on auto. You could change it. Let's just show you what white balance would look like if we changed it. You watch in the screen. You can see how it's changing. These are the different white balances. And you can see how they get thrown off. But you could also use pre, uh, uh, which is a preset. ISO, you can change your ISO by finding whichever one you want and touching it. Um, you've got your picture control, your picture styles. You have your, a okay, so here we go. AFS, this is single focus. This means, so we're going to select that. And let me hit info to get out of here. Single focus. I'm holding the button halfway down. It locked focused in and it beeped. That's single focus. They also offer you this AFF. That's follow focus, and it's going to continually focus. Now, it's not the best in the world. It's going to be slow. Now, it's focusing on Steven. You can see it's hunting for it. Hunting for Steven. Found Steven. Switching. Let's see. You can see that it just changes. And then we zoom back out. It, and, it, and it's changing. It, not the greatest function in the world to follow focus. Generally, when you're shooting video, you're going to probably probably be in manual. That is a, that is one of the places that I am um, when I shoot video because I'm in better control of it. So let's do this, and then I just manually focus. And you could still do this. Actually, no, you can't. You can't do that. I was going to say you could hold the button halfway down, but you have to get back into AF single for that. But I can still do manual focus and get this there, and then I can manually focus, and then occasionally, if I need help focusing, I'll be like, oh, hey, help me. And then it hunts, and it finds it, and that red box means it didn't lock in the focus. That's what that's meaning, because it's low light over here. Yep, not finding it. And there we go, that time it found it. So there you found the focus. So let's see what else we have in the menu system. You have these options, uh, face priority AF, You've got normal AF, wide area AF, and subject tracking AF. So this is a, that's a rundown of the screen for live view. So to start recording, we hit the red button up top, which is your record button, and boom, you see the REC up top, and you see the numbers counting down. That means that you are recording. Now, once you get to the end, you're going to stop and restart because it's going to cut it off at 20 minutes. Uh, that's actually why we use this Atomos right here. Let me focus on it. The reason that we use this is so that we could get infinite recording, uh, and these are very expensive, but they do have a model that is not as expensive as this one, but that's so that you can do continual recording. So if you're looking to do long recording of seminars that are two hours long, one, you're going to need extra battery power, which means you should get a, a, uh, uh, an AC power adapter, and then two, you get an Atomos like this, and it lets you record for more than 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop recording, boom. And there's that, and that is basically a rundown of how we do live view for using video. So now we've set up most of the camera and run through the menu systems, and you should be ready to shoot some pictures. Now, there's some things in here that I think are important that we really haven't touched on just yet that I want to do an overview of so you understand that. And one of those is the autofocus modes. There's a couple of different ones, and I want to explain them to you so you know which ones are going to work best for you. So again, info pulls up all the things on the back of the screen. AFA, and then this, and then that. What are these things? Well, let's go take a look. I want to go into the autofocus modes and let's talk about those. This is AFA. This is the one where the autofocus will select between continuous and single. And I'm about to explain what both of those are. Um, I don't like using AFA. 
I don't want the camera to make any of those decisions for me for autofocus. I want to do that myself. So AFS, let's read what the camera tells us it is. It says, for stationary subjects, camera focuses when shutter release button is pressed halfway down. Uh, sorry, halfway. Focus locks when camera focuses. So what this means is, let me show you. We're on AFS. That is single focus. That means that when I hold the button halfway down and I lock it in, you hear it? That is that focus beep that I showed you earlier. That means it's in focus and I can take a picture, okay? So that means that we're locked in. Now, that's great for stationary subjects. Like I'm shooting this camera sitting here, I want to have that, well, it's not moving. So I can lock in and recompose. Meaning, look, my finger is held halfway down on the button and the focus isn't changing. Whereas in continuous focus, it's going to continually focus as long as my fingers press halfway down. So this is good for stationary objects and things that aren't moving. Now let's go back into the info screen and get you to AFC, which is continuous. This is where you press the button halfway down and it's going to continually focus on whatever the subject is. That's for action. That's for cars. That's for things that are moving. You want to do continuous focus. What other functions do we have? We have manual focus. That's obviously if you're going to set your camera and do all the manual focusing yourself. You're going to want to make sure you switch this over to manual so that it disengages the motors so that you can turn the, uh, the focus ring for whatever lens you are using. Okay, so we've got that. Those, I'm going to put it back into AFS, great for portraits, continuous is great for sports. Then we also have, this is going to change. So let's go back into, into single. So right here is in single and we've got this area, this menu is called the AF area mode. This is where you would select your focusing points. You see how it has just a, a one dot behind it? That means you go look in your camera and you've got either 39 or 11 focusing points and you can individually select them. Meaning, if I want to put somebody off to the left-hand side, I can move the focus point. You activate the focus point by pressing the shutter button halfway down. That turns it on in the, inside the camera. And then you can move the red box over to where you want it. You can hold the button halfway down and it's going to lock the focus. Another way to do that, and if you want to get the focus point back to the middle, you hit the OK button and it moves it back to the middle. So I could lock in and recompose. You just want to be careful how much you move because if you lock in your focus and you move back or you move forward, your focus may not be right. Now again, I touch on this in the Fronos Photo Guide to getting out of auto. I run through all the different focusing modes and it shows you the quick way to understand understand how to use each focusing mode uh, and you can check that out by clicking up on the screen right here. We'll take you over to a free preview of that video so you can check it out. So let's go back into the info setting here. So we've done it for AFS. Let's get into AFC for continuous. So now there's a bunch of different options. You've got, you have single AF point, you have nine point dynamic. Now the difference here between single and dynamic is let's hit the info. Is, here it will tell you in dynamic, if a subject briefly shifts away from, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read it, guys, because you can see it up on the screen yourself. I'm going to go back. I'm going to explain it my way. Dynamic means that if you have nine points selected, if the subject starts on the left-hand side of the frame and you're auto-focusing with them and they move to the center or they move all the way to the right, the focus is going to continue to track them across the screen. Now, where if you had just single, Hold on, let me get back to single. If you had just single, it's going to follow them there, but if they shift out of that area where you have the focus point, it's not going to track them. You've got 9, 21, 39, 3D tracking, check that one out and look at subjects that move. You're going to see the autofocus point moving on its own. It's a good one to try. I don't always like it because if I'm shooting uh, somebody playing soccer and the ball's coming at me, it may focus on that ball and not on the person where you wanted it to be focused. So that's something to keep in mind there. Um, and then you've got this one called AF area mode, auto area AF. That's where the camera's gonna do all the work and select the focusing point. Most likely the closest thing to the camera is what it's gonna focus on. But you just have to play around with these different modes. You also have metering modes we didn't talk about. You have matrix metering, You've got center weighted metering, then the center weighted is going to take just a reading of what's inside the center portion of the frame. And then you've got spot metering, which is going to take an even smaller spot reading. Say if I, you just wanted to get the meter reading on me, you would get that with the spot. I personally 
nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, we'll leave it on matrix metering. Because when you're shooting in manual, you're looking at the inside of the camera and you're looking at the plus minuses and trying to line that up right in the middle. And uh, the matrix metering is, is, is one of the better modes to use. I like using that. So pretty much that runs us through the back of the camera. We talked about all of these different things. Again, the touchscreen is so intuitive, lets you switch the ISO quickly, lets you get to anything you want back here, but just know that you have your AFC and your AFS. Determine for yourself, am I in continuous focus or should I be in single focus? Should I be in single point or should I be in dynamic for what I'm shooting? Now in single, you're, you don't really need to worry about dynamic because it actually doesn't give you that option to show up because the subject isn't going to be auto-focused. But 9 point is great, 21 point is great, 3D can be a little awkward, but try it out. And that really is it for that little section that I wanted to talk about. And now I turn the camera off, but that's it. I think that's a very good overview of the Nikon D5500. This is a very powerful camera. But don't be afraid if you're not getting the best results right off the bat. It, it takes time. You have to understand how the camera works and you have to start to understand the fundamentals of how photography works, the exposure triangle. I have a lot of free videos that you guys can check. So if you haven't subscribed yet here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe because you can see all of my older videos as well as every new video that comes out. I don't want you guys to get scared away and think that, oh, the camera sucks or, or something like that. And, and don't take this the wrong way but most of the times that there's issues it's user error I was in the same boat I was trying to figure out why wasn't the camera doing what I wanted to, it to do it's because I wasn't telling the camera what it should be doing and that was my fault it's just a matter of learning the functionality of the camera getting confident in understanding your settings and then going out there and shooting and using the powerful capabilities that this camera has this is one of the most powerful cameras out there in such a low price tag that it, you know it's really good that if you have this you're going to hopefully get nice results but remember understand the fundamentals of photography before anything else and just get out there shoot enjoy it and that's really where I'll leave you guys. This is a, a free look at how to use the Nikon D5500. If you want to get onto my email list to get a lot of free information that I give out, go ahead, look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'm going to send you, send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, which is definitely going to help you guys out in those low, low light situations. Get great images. Again, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget about this info button up here. It's going to take you over to a real world five minute portrait that I did using the Nikon D5500 and the 18 to 140 lens. Great video, great information. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this helped you out and that is where I will leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.